three. Good afternoon and welcome everybody. Thanks for attending. Uh, we have one or two participants who may uh, join us in a couple of minutes and we had some technical difficulties. So we've start, started a couple minutes late, but thanks for your uh, patience in getting this rolling. Uh, in the clerk's chair, we have Nancy Davis, who's gonna keep an eye on things and let me know if I do anything wrong. And uh, we'll start with attendance. Nancy, have you got attendance nailed down? I do, thank you very much. And we, uh, Bailey has been there. Sorry, your sound went in and out a little bit there at the end. Sorry, I have attendance and Mayor Bailey has sent his regrets as well. Understood, thank you very much. And uh, we, uh, uh, yeah, there were some internet issues earlier, so we're, we're running a little bit late, but again, thanks for everyone's patience. And uh, so attendance has been taken, we do have quorum um, and everybody has received uh, the agenda in advance, including uh, an updated revised agenda this afternoon with an addendum. Um, could I have someone please uh, move to approve the agenda if there are no objections. Uh, approved by Joan. Can I get a seconder please? By Dan Brown. Are, are there any questions related to the agenda? Uh, seeing none, we will move forward. Uh, does anyone have a de declaration of pecuniary interest? Seeing none, we will continue. Uh, we have one delegation today. This is related to the subject of the Glen Morris Bridge Rehabilitation Project. We have County Staffer Joe Murphy and uh, Consultant William Van Royven here to uh, educate us about this project and then we can have some discussion afterwards. Go ahead, guys. Yes, hello, uh, uh, Councillor Howes and the committee. Uh, my name is Joe Murphy. I'm a Capital Project Manager uh, in the Operations Department. Um, I look after uh, bridges and several capital projects. I'd um, just uh, like to uh, advise that uh, the Glen Morris Bridge on uh, Glen Morris Road, uh, you may know it, the Masonry Arch uh, located on Glen Morris Road, um, was identified through our bridge management study for rehabilitation. Uh, we've gone through an RFP process to hire uh, William Van Royen and Garnet Fleming uh, as our uh, consultant to review the condition of the bridge and to come forward with some recommendations for rehabilitation. Um, we have completed a um, uh, design brief and uh, that was prepared by William and his firm. And uh, William will present uh, those findings, uh, some recommendations and some steps moving forward. So William, I will pass it over to you. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks for welcoming me today. Um, so as noted, I believe the design briefing note uh, was issued, circulated as part of this meeting. So um, essentially what we have provided is a background review, identifying that this existing structure, uh, which is located on County Road 13, Branchton Road, uh, about 100 meters east of County Road 26, which is also referred to as Glen Morris Road East, um, but it spans over Glen Road, Morris Road, sorry, it's east of Branston Road, which is, sorry, I switched those. Um, effectively, this is an existing stone masonry arch um, constructed circa 1854 by the Great Western Railway Company. It's about a 6.2 meter span, um, and it has a secondary span adjacent to it for water flow through a little raceway. Um, so we've, we've done a little bit of research. We're working with a heritage specialist, ASI, um, who has provided me with some preliminary feedback in terms of their cultural heritage evaluation and their heritage impact assessment. That will be prepared and circulated subsequently for information, but effectively they've determined that the proposed scope, which I'll go through, um, has positive impact on retention of the heritage attributes. The intent of the scope of work is to um, maintain the existing heritage aspects and, and provide um, or address structural identified uh, deterioration 
and deficiencies. So um, we conducted, Gannett Fleming, on behalf of the county, conducted a field investigation to verify the findings of the previous study. It was confirmed that there is missing mortar uh, between the stones in various locations. There's presence of vegetation, some graffiti. Um, there's a, a hollow in one of the stones where a bird has made a home, and there's a bird nest. So a number of relatively local minor um, defects that have been identified uh, in addition to some out of place stones on adjacent retaining walls um, that we've proposed to address. So um, through the design recommendation process, working with the county, we understand that this structure has been identified uh, as a registered heritage attribute and has a significance to the local area. So um, with respect to that, we, we have, come to the approach to try and minimize the impacts, obviously, and the proposed work um, right now as it stands is to address the um, mortar loss, remove vegetation, um, not um, the, 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 we're going to address the mortar, maintain the existing stones where they are with the exception of the number of out of place stones where we plan to reset those and reinstate them to their original location. Um, and part of the debate that we've had or a discussion is related to the process required to complete the repointing. So uh, the grouting process uh, requires that the grout be applied on clean stone, um, whereby the existing um, unstable material needs to be removed, surface prepared, and then new grout be replaced. We understand from a heritage perspective that there will be a desire to reinstate mortar to match the existing. Um, however, there's a bit of a variation in coloring throughout the structure. So it's not like we can look at one location and say, okay, this is the color has to be. Um, so we're cognizant of, of that reality and the potential impacts on the aesthetics. Um, when cleaning, that you can use a high pressure washer, you can use a wire brush. Um, these procedures can, uh, sometimes I don't know if you've ever pressure washed your patio or stone or a siding, there are potential for color discoloration or um, I don't know, I don't wanna say excessive cleaning, but as part of the process, um, we intend to be diligent with the selection of a qualified contractor, but there's potential for impacts to the aesthetics. Um, and so with that in mind, we wanted to have a discussion an input with the Heritage Committee in terms of the level of effort and the scope proposed to address the defects. Um, the Heritage Specialist has suggested that this is a overall positive impact with minimal impact on the ultimate heritage um, attributes. And so there is support for the, for the work, but obviously um, I, I personally think it might look a little bit funny if we pressure wash one little square area and, and not the rest of it. But uh, obviously I, I want to get feedback in terms of, uh, I know in the past there has been um, controlled cleaning, especially with regard to spray paint and, and that uh, graffiti that may be on the existing structure or maybe a preferred um, firm for conducting this work. And so um, through this uh, meeting, I was hoping to also maybe collect feedback from the committee in terms of who's done the work before, what kind of qualification requirements have been listed and any restrictions or um, recommendations for consideration that the committee may have. Sorry, Joe, anything else did you wanted to add to that? Oh, sorry. No, I think you did a good job of explaining well. Uh, yeah, so we're generally, uh, I do understand in the past that there was concerns of how and how the bridge is cleaned um, uh, with a pressure washer or certain uh, chemicals or something that might be applied to the stone that must, may discolor the stone and what, uh, or, 
uh, damage the stone in some ways. Um, so we're really concerned that we don't want to do uh, any damage. And we just thought we'd present it to committee. If you had any, if the committee had any preferred contractors or preferred methods uh, for cleaning the stone um, or uh, any preferences for the work that was done uh, or anything like that, um, that we'd get, uh, have this discussion and, and allow for input from the committee before we proceeded too far. Great, okay. Uh, thanks, Joe, and thanks, William. Um, in a second, I'll, I will open this up to questions and discussion amongst the committee. Uh, first, I wanted to say, um, for those of us who love heritage, and everybody on this committee does, uh, the words rehabilitation are always welcome. And uh, we, we were, you know, these, these bridges are, are yeah, I think because there's a couple, there's two or three, right, in the county, I think, or, or at least in this area, let's say. And, and um, we, uh, you know, we're lucky to have them. They're very unique. 1854 is, is, uh, is pretty significant. And, uh, um, you know, and I like, you know, like, it's like the, like William said, uh, positive impact, we're you know, trying to pres preserve the heritage attributes. Um, that's all, that's all good news. Um, are there questions and or comments, recommendations related to this? We'll start with Marianne. Uh, thanks for your presentation, William and Joe. Um, you may want to connect with Kathy Ballantyne. She's the Director of uh, Parks and Facilities for the County of Brant. They've, uh, they've been involved with doing some uh, restoration work on cemetery stones of various uh, qualities and degrees. So some are marble, some are granite, some may be cement, uh, some may be stone. But there are a couple of products and one that uh, an organization that I or a a group that I'm involved with is also doing a trial. So there's two uh, chemical products um, that are available. They're supposed to be biologically, <laughs> biological and um, environmentally friendly. One is called D2 Environmental uh, Solution, available in Brantford through a supplier um, um, who does custom masonry work and uh, mortar for old structures like uh, you're talking about. So those, um, those structures have different amounts of lime and are different from the mortar that's used today. If you're looking at, um, at uh, faithful restoration or rehabilitation work. The other product is called Wet and Forget um, and it's sprayed on. Um, I know it's an American product. The other is probably is too, but um, they're used extensively on, uh, in cemeteries. So just a little something to offer if, um, if that isn't something that has been considered. We don't have enough um, background or knowledge about that at this point because we only uh, started using that in a small cemetery last year on family stones for a trial before it um, is used extensively through this through the same cemetery. Great. That's, okay. That's great. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Marianne. That's that's great in uh, great suggestions. Um, I, I was going to say uh, too that the. And I can only speak for myself here, but I, in looking at a, at a project like that and looking at the pictures and, and having seen the bridge in person, but not recently, um, I, I don't have an expectation that it, it's, you know, everything is going to match up it, it's with, a, with a bridge this old. Um, I, I would understand that, you know, well, you know, th this isn't the the Arc de Triomphe. This is this is a, <laughs> a, a 1854 bridge, um, and and if if the if the mortar or the grout whatever doesn't all line up like a museum piece, I'm okay with that. That's me personally, um, because I understand the, the the context of the project. But um, I'm looking at Dan Brown specifically. Dan, you've got expertise in a lot of these areas. Any comments on this one? Uh, I I read over today, and I'm glad that they're saving it rather than tearing it down. Um, I think the patina is the charm of the bridge. Uh, my preference would be spot cleaning, repairs. There has to be some sort of 
a chemical or some sort of some, an aging that could be added on top of that. I recently had my house repointed in uh, 1855 and you can see all the spots, but I haven't, I haven't got into trying to color it back in, but I'm sure there's products out there that, that could be found to do that. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, I, I don't have anything. Other. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pause this meeting just for a second to let staff know that Drew Scoose is trying to get into the meeting and he's getting a screen that says the host will let him in soon. Um, so if, uh, if staff could look into that, please. Thank you, Nancy. And then we'll go back to Marianne for a minute. Uh, Steve, I had a conversation uh, five minutes ago with Mike. Um, he's yeah. also trying to get in and is unable. Okay. All right. He may so arrive we... at the door um, and join me. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, he's, he's tried. He's he may. But um, right, he's, sure. he's tried and just not able. Sure. Okay. Thank you for, for letting us know that. Um, we will, uh, it, yeah, we'll just kind of slowly um, give it a couple beats to see if we can and get these extra people in. Um, or Mike may be driving to Marianne's house at this point. Um, but uh, in, in general, I think, uh, I think what we're hearing is that the County of Brant Heritage Advisory Committee is supportive of this project and um, uh, also uh, confident that uh, the staff and consultants involved are, are, are taking the right steps. Uh, Joe, is this a situation where um, you need a motion from, uh, from the Heritage Committee to take back to council to show, just to show that we have, that your project is supported? Uh, what, what do you need from us? I, I don't think so in particular. Um, we were just, we just wanted to have some input on um, that we were taking the correct steps and not, uh, not doing anything that would, uh, I guess, uh, devalue the structure uh, from the committee's perspective, so. All right, so I, I, oh, Dan. Sorry, I'd just like to reiterate that I, I, I would like to see spot cleaning rather than the whole thing be cleaned because if there is a, if it sticks out like a sore thumb, there may be a chance to, to age it somehow in small spots rather than have the whole structure be cleaned. Okay, I think that that's fair feedback, Joe. I, I think uh, we could be fairly selective on the color of the grout too to try and make it not stand out too much. Um, I know our our concern is there is di uh, differing coloration in some of the stone, um, but uh, I know our we do have some ability to do some color selection when when we're selecting the grout itself. So great. Okay. I okay. So I think. Um, You've got the supportive response that uh, that we would hope on this project. And uh, um, if our other two members are able to join in through the technical glitches later, if they happen to have any extra notes, we will have them put into the, the minutes. Um, but uh, at this point, we'll I think we'll leave this agenda item and you can confidently proceed knowing that uh, knowing what the the support is from the uh, the heritage committee and the feedback yes, thank you okay thank you okay moving along we're going to go to uh, adoption of minutes from the previous meeting uh, from the April 7th uh, meeting do we have a motion to approve oh, Steve I think uh, Nancy's trying to talk oh. to you Sorry, Nancy. I was just wondering if I get a motion to receive the um, presentation and noting the comments of the committee. Absolutely. Can we have a motion for that, please? Dan Brown and seconded by John McAlpine. Awesome. And all right, moving on to the, uh, if there's any, if there were no questions regarding the minutes from our last meeting, can I have a motion to approve those minutes, please? Moved by Joan, seconded by Marianne. Thank you very much. And I don't believe we have any business arising from those minutes. We'll move into staff reports. Uh, Kayla Cheechman is here and is going to give us a presentation. 
uh, related to, uh, or at least a discussion related to uh, updating of the heritage forms. Kayla, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So it's gonna be a little, little bit of me and Brandon Cortliv kind of taking two sides of this. Um, so this is something that we kind of discussed at our last meeting as well. Um, so we just wanna kind of get into this because it's gonna touch on a few of the next um, pieces in our minutes as well. So I don't know if Brandon wants to start with a form that he has already created that was sent out to the committee um, with the agenda this week. And then I'll kind of take it from there as well. Uh, thanks, Kayla. So um, as you'll see attached to the agenda, we, um, we've included a heritage alteration request form. Um, so this isn't something that we've typically standardized in the past. Um, so we're looking at, and as we see with this meeting, we have a few you know, folks coming in for requests to alterations, uh, alterations to said designated structures. Um, so we're just looking at providing some standardization for folks. Um, giving them some guidance, right? So if there's a forum that kind of provides the minimum checklist of, of things that we'd like to see, um, we figured that's kind of a great place to start. Uh, we can add that into our eventual um, policies and procedures manual. Um, and then that way we can kind of start creating some other forms as well that will help any of these applicants uh, move forward. So I, I think kind of the purpose of us adding this onto the agenda here um, is to see that we've, we've kind of tested this one out. Um, if there's any suggestions you have of additional information you'd like to see come through uh, with things like alteration requests, um, any suggestions from the committee are welcome for that. Um, and again, these can be living documents. So if there is stuff as we kind of work along with them um, that we notice we wanna add or subtract, we can do that as well. Um, and like we say, the end game is to put it kind of into that policies and procedures manual and put that forward to council for approval. Um, so, so maybe with that, I'll hand it back to Kayla if you, you have anything else to add. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah, so we just wanted to start there because that's one that we actually have used. And you'll see later on with Adelaide Hunter Hoodless Homestead, we've had them fill that out as a designated property to have that consistency to be able to bring that information back clearly to the committee as well. Um, so I just want to suggest um, that the next one that we work on would be a designation um, request. So if a group is wanting to an individual for their home um, would like to have a heritage designation um, put on it, similar to how be talking about later with the Paris Clean Cemetery um, that we have a form that we can give out and that's consistent and then that information comes back to us and we're able to provide that with the committee. Um, so I think it can be quite simple. I've done these in the past with other heritage committees and it's really kept it nice and simple. Things like applicant name, the address of the property, legal description, and that reason for designation. So then we can bring that back as a group and say, do you know what, do we need a little bit more? Do we wanna have um, some more heritage information added or kind of some more unique features or if we wanna go out on a site visit? It's kind of that nice start so we can gather and say, you know what, does this make sense for heritage designation or not? Um, so I just wanted to suggest that to the group. Um, those were kind of the questions that I asked from the Paris Plains Cemetery when they um, asked for designation. So I was thinking it would be nice to make that our next form. So I just wanted to get a little bit of feedback from the group and kind of let you know um, what me and Brandon have been talking about. Okay, uh, uh, thank you both. And and I, I wanna say that we appreciate, we value the- kind of behind the scenes. Okay, sorry. So we had, you have a, had a little glitch there and you're semi-frozen, so. Um, oh, I am. For <laughs> nice. Yeah, you're 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 going in and out of frequency. So, uh, but then hopefully, can still hear. No, it, it might help if well, yeah, hopefully yeah, turn can off the camera. No, no. Yeah, we we can hear you now, Kayla. Yeah, can you not hear me at all? We can hear okay. you now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Sorry about that. I had a feeling that might happen, but. Hopefully you heard most of what I was talking about. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank. And 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 I was as I was saying the uh, we 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 appreciate and value the attention that staff is is putting into uh, um, improvement of our procedures and our our standardization and just just making everything a little bit smoother in in how we handle uh, issues related to heritage. Uh, your attention is appreciated. 
I'm going to turn it over to uh, the committee for some feedback so far. Joan, you can go first. Thanks. That's a really, I think it's a really great start and, and um, the getting a look at the actual form is very helpful. Um, I just have a couple uh, comments. Um, I wonder if the information in, in section four could go at the beginning of the form to talk about what's required. And um, I noticed in, in that section too, that there's like capitalization of Grant Heritage Committee, but in one part, but then the Heritage Committee is referred to and it's lowercase and I'm not sure why. And the other question I have that's a broader one is <clears throat> when there's a building permit application or a demolition permit application, um, I almost wonder if these, this information couldn't somehow just be incorporated as a section that would be completed if the building is or property is designated, but it would be a tick box is the property uh, designated and then it would be a section that would be completed or an extra page or whatever. Like I, I, I just, my, my hope is um, if, if the forms are completely separate, there's that possibility things get missed, but if they're more integrated, then we would capture the, the, the heritage concerns every time. Okay, thanks, Joan. And uh, Brandon, can you uh, respond on, on whether those two worlds speak to each other and to the, the suggestions that uh, Joan has, has made for uh, tweaking the form? Absolutely, uh, thank you, Chair House, and thank you, Joan, for those comments. Um, so one of the issues we have is that um, generally speaking with the building permit process, um, we need the approval from council for the project before they apply for their building permit. Um, but it is definitely something we can look into to see how other municipalities kind of handle that, that, um, that gap, so to speak, um, because I definitely agree. We, we want the communication to be, um, be on point with that uh, to make sure that we're not missing anything. Um, so that's something Yeah, we can definitely look into that a bit more and we can address that um, with an update to this. And then again, thank you for pointing out some of those um, some of those particular spelling and grammar things. We can definitely um, tweak those up to get uh, get things ship shape for us. So hopefully that helps. Okay, and and Brandon, does that include the, the potential of shifting the the kind of blanket information of section four earlier into the form? Just uh, okay, great. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. Thanks, Dan. Did you have some suggestions? Yeah, uh, just to what Joan said about the demolition permit. That's I've had a few of those or filled out a few of them for myself for uh, in the city where there's a number of signatures you have to get. The first one is through planning and they determine the age of the house and if if it needs to go through heritage to be demolished, demolished. So anyway, um, my other question is, is there a fee for applying for either of those two things? I've never applied for... Uh, designation or an alteration on a designated building? Is there a fee attached to those? Through Chair House, it's my understanding that there is not a fee currently in the County of Brant. Um, some municipalities do uh, include some things to help just cover staff costs and that, yeah. um, but you often see that partnered with um, other kind of financial incentives that help, help uh, folks out. Um, so that's definitely something we could look into even around budget time and towards the end of the year. Um, if anyone has any suggestions for that, uh, yeah, we're happy I'm, to look into that. I'm, I'm glad that there isn't a fee, if there is a fee, or if there's not, but I'm just curious, that's all. Great. Great. Thanks, Dan and Brandon. Uh, any other comments, feedback on the uh, this topic of the form and its update? Uh, no, then carrying on. Uh, uh, Nancy, do we need a motion to receive that? Pardon? Okay, I, and Nancy's going in and out of audio, but I think we're looking for a motion to receive that, uh, that, uh, imp no, we're not looking for, <laughs> okay. All right, thank you, Nancy. Uh, we were happy to, we were happy to receive that information, even if we don't have to, to move to say it uh, formally. 
Um, that's great. We're going to move on to 7.2 with uh, Brandon is going to talk to us about next step within the heritage inventory, uh, carrying on from the, the good discussion that we had last month. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Chair House. So I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, the slideshow is also attached to uh, to the, the agenda. It's short and sweet, so um, I'll try not to take up too much time. Um, I think the, the main purpose um, kind of after this presentation will be a bit more discussion again, um, and we can uh, we can go from there once we get to that point. But I'll just confirm that uh, that everyone can see the presentation up on the screen. Yep, perfect. Uh, so as Chair House mentioned, uh, after the recommendation for the approval of our inventory um, at our last meeting, uh, we wanted to take a moment just to talk about kind of next steps for that project in particular, and how we're going to leverage that uh, kind of robust set of data and all that hard work that uh, was put into kind of many years of preparing that inventory. Like I said, I'll try and keep this brief. Um, and we really like to kind of spur some conversation with the committee over the, this meeting in the next couple months to see what types of levels of protection we're looking for kind of next steps for projects in the coming years um, and kind of what we're gonna do for creating a more robust kind of heritage conservation program here in the county. Yeah. So as we noted at the previous meeting and kind of with the presentation of the inventory, we have several tools in our, our toolbox for heritage conservation here in the County of Brant. Um, and moving that inventory forward for council really was kind of a foundational step for us. Um, Kind of creates that robust heritage conservation program that we're talking about and we can move forward from that step to kind of prioritize and align um, our objectives. So I've summarized kind of the next four components of, of this project and as it leads into the others um, as a, aligning kind of our tool set, uh, assessing our opportunities here, we'll arrange our priorities and then that will kind of lead to us achieving our results. So we're, we're small but mighty here in the county. Uh, and we're well on our way with, with heritage conservation efforts. Um, our inventory, for example, had over 1,500 properties on it. Um, we have over 30 uh, individually designated sites here in the county. So approving that inventory, like I said, was one of the steps to kind of align our tools, provide a broader mechanism for commenting on things like uh, building permits, demolition permits, de development applications. And then we have our designated properties on our register, uh, no listed properties at the moment and we don't have um, any heritage conservation districts. So just kind of pointing out what, what tools we've used, what tools we haven't used quite yet. Um, but uh, some of those, those tools like the register and the designation, they apply a more legal and formal level of protection. Um, but as we know, they also take some time and coordination to put together. Uh, you'll see here um, a map of, of downtown Paris um, and there's some additional mapping as well that was attached to, to the agenda. So the, the map here in the table shares some of the data from our inventory um, as kind of an example of how we can leverage it to, to continue our data collection, kind of create benchmarks and track um, our progress. So downtown Paris here, you'll see the, on the map, um, it kind of has one of the higher rates of properties uh, that we've been able to inventory, um, but you'll see that the number of designated properties in comparison is quite low. Um, so you'll see too with the asset density number that we've shown here, uh, there are several areas of the county that have have clusters of heritage buildings. Um, we've been we've been able to designate several properties, for example, in Uppertown, an area of Paris. Uh, Mount Pleasant has a, quite a few as well. Um, but looking into this more in, this information a bit more in with the mapping, you can say that maybe it's pointing us in the direction of a heritage conservation district rather than trying to individually designate structures. You'll see as well that the mapping that we attached to the agenda, we're able to kind of create what we're calling areas of cultural heritage interest. So we're working with on those for the new official plan. Um, that's kind of clusters of inventory pro properties, again, leveraging our inventory data. Um, and we'll be able to use that as, as an overlay designation in, in the new OP um, to implement some stronger policies and protection measures for development. Uh, so those kind of areas, they aren't heritage conservation districts, um, but they certainly could be predecessors to them. Um, it's one of the things that we can kind of talk about um, as we refine the information, kind of look through it, study those clusters, um, and look for formal ways to, to provide protection to those areas. Um, and it's a, kind of a matter of, I guess, providing the most bang for the buck, so to speak, um, and what we can do um, using this data to kind of leverage protection um, throughout the county of Brant. 
Uh, another kind of thing that we can point out with, with the inventory and with the data um, is the opportunity to kind of continue adding information. Uh, it'll help us kind of prioritize our projects, like I said, um, and provide those protective measures. We know that uh, sometimes it's difficult to find the mechanism um, to catch changes or demolitions of buildings uh, well before they happen. Um, we've, we've experienced that. It's common in other municipalities as well. Um, but there are tools that, that are available for us to kind of close those loopholes, so to speak, um, and prioritize things to make sure that we're catching um, kind of the most, uh, most important um, kind of aspects of our cultural heritage. Uh, so one example of that is, is agricultural structures. So we've talked about this a little bit, barns, for example. So they don't require a demolition permit uh, in Ontario. And uh, that's, that's something that comes from the building code. Um, but then we do have uh, the, the listing opportunity available to us. So a future inventory project, for example, could be to assess barns uh, throughout the county of Brant for agricultural structures, ones that wouldn't need a demolition permit. Um, we could kind of do those evaluations and then work with the property owners to recommend other listing or designating of those properties. So even just the listing itself, that would provide a mechanism for, for us to comment on any demolitions because a demolition of a listed structure uh, requires permission from the county. Um, so again, it's kind of about using those tools that are available to us in different ways and prioritizing them to, to get what we're looking for. Uh, so in summary, uh, the inventory really does work kind of as our foundation. Um, we're proud of the work that, that you've all, all done and staff have done um, to get that, that moving. And it really is a living document. So it's great to see it finally kind of move forward to council and we can really leverage its potential. Um, we've also been able to update our terms of reference. Um, that uh, will be going to the next council meeting, I believe, for approval. The bylaw um, will be going through. And uh, as you saw with uh, what we chatted about with Kayla, with our heritage forms under item 7.1, um, kind of our next steps working towards policies and procedures and standardizing things. So there's lots, lots of things kind of rolling at the same time here, um, but we're definitely looking to kind of leverage all of this, this good stuff, um, in not, not just the inventory, but all these other things as well um, to get some more great projects going here uh, with, for heritage conservation in the county. Um, so with that, um, I'll turn things back over to Chair House and uh, myself and Kayla are happy to help um, answer any questions or if there's any discussion and you need some guidance with that as well, we're, we're here for some assistance. Thank you, Brandon. Um, I have some comments and questions, but be, I want to first open it up to the rest of the committee and um, get your reactions and your feedback to the uh, presentation that Brandon gave us and your thoughts for the future. Um, and we will hope that Marianne can't, comes back because um, <laughs> I, I think she will have some uh, comments for this subject. But Dan, let's start with you. Sorry, there we go. So I have uh, two comments. Uh, I, I live in the city of Brantford right now. Uh, my house is listed and I've recently applied for a demolition permit for a garage. I just explain how well this works. Once the inventory is listed, uh, it automatically gets flagged and it had to go through the Heritage Committee to be approved for me to demolition the garage. So it, it, it does work out good. Um, my other point, uh, have we ever looked at the percentages of the listed houses compared to the protected houses and those percentages have we ever compared those to other municipalities to say that we're under protecting our heritage houses great great question dan um and 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 brandon before you uh before you attempt an answer let's let's just recap one more time the difference between uh the two perfect um, so first I'll say what we've done with our inventory, it's not listing, it's not designation, it's just kind of our, our inventory of what we've collected data-wise, right? Um, the next step then would be to select kind of portions of that for possible listing or designation. Uh, listed properties, we don't have any in the County of Brant on our register right now. Um, designated properties we have, I, and Kayla, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's just over 30. 
Um, what we can do, we can definitely put some information together, some benchmarking um, information to find out kind of what other municipalities have done. Um, we were looking into some information specific to heritage conservation districts as well, but um, we can look at individual designations um, and provide that information for, for the committee. I do think it would be very beneficial to see that. Um, but what I will say is that for, for a small municipality, a small rural municipality as well, um, I think we are doing quite well with, with designating. Um, and I think building on that momentum to keep things going will we'll just we'll be great. So, mm -hmm. Thank you, Brandon. You glitched out a little bit there, but I think we did get your uh, the gist of what you're saying in the end. And, uh, and I like the idea, Dan, that has brought up a good point. The idea of benchmarking compared to other uh, um, rural municipalities of similar size, it, it would be interesting to see, um, and, and I'm not exactly sure how we compare to Stratford or Elora or whatever, but other, other uh, smaller municipalities and, and uh, of similar population size to see what, you know, do they have 100 designated homes or do they have 10? Um, and that, that's, that'd be some good comparatives. We, we may be under designating, we may be over designating, we don't know until we see some benchmarking. So while that's uh, more work for staff, um, it, it does sound like uh, time well spent, um, reasonably speaking. Um, so thanks for that, Dan. Any other questions or comments to this subject in particular, uh, John? Just a comment and just saying, glad to see it's uh, finally coming to fruition. And um, it's been a long project. I think over 10 years that we've been working on this and uh, just appreciate the work you've brought together just to pull it all together for the final time, hopefully. So, and the fact that it is sort of a living document and it will again be changing with time too. So it thanks won't be a, very much. It won't be a, Thanks, John. So it won't be a final time. It'll be it'll be yeah. this, this time. Um, and and uh, we did talk about that a little bit at the last meeting. Um, Marianne. Um, yeah, thanks, John. Your comment about a living document, as uh, Brandon and Kayla mentioned, um, if there are properties uh, that people are aware of presently that are not on the inventory, can we forward those to you? Yes, absolutely. Um, and we can even look at other opportunities um, for, for folks to add their own properties to the inventory if they'd like. Um, but yes, I would say that's a great place to start. Um, myself or Kayla, feel free to forward us information and we can, we can double check. Brandon, you muted yourself right at towards the end there, but um, I, again, I think we got the gist. Um, but Marianne's question brings up a good point, and that is if, if my neighbor wants to see if he's on the list, where does he look? So we do have that, some of that information available online. Um, there is a mapping portal. Uh, hopefully I'm not breaking up too much. Can you hear me all right? Um, with you so other, far. Perfect. Otherwise um, they can reach out to Kayla or myself. Uh, we, have, we have full access to that as well. Um, and we do have a little kind of report printout that we can provide for people. Um, we do that if, if uh, say a real estate agent or a homeowner inquires, um, we can provide that information. Great, okay. And as we, as we uh, feel encouraged by Kayla's work on the Heritage Hub or the County Hub or whatever it's gonna be called down the road, it would be nice to see a button that you could click to go in and see see the entire list. Um, so that's, that's uh, we, will, we will remain optimistic that that kind of tool um, will be available in the future. Um, my, seeing no other comments or questions, just a couple that I wanted to, oh, Joan, go ahead. I, I just, I hadn't seen that listing that gave the stats of like how many are in each community of the, the <clears throat> On the on the inventory, that's that's great, and I just uh, I recall um, I am excited about the prospect of their establishing heritage conservation districts. I'm super supportive of that. 
And I just, um, I recall that Drew Skews had circulated what was, I think, an old application of a heritage district that kind of included Banfield and some of Grand River Street near the Penmarvian. And I guess I'm curious to know whatever happened to that application and, you know, if it just failed or <laughs> right. lost that, interest or yeah. if it was amalgamation kind of put an end to it. I don't know. Yes. And I, I remember that that was way, way pre amalgamation. Uh, it might have been an 80s or 90s uh, kind of thing. And, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have the, the, the answer to what happened to that. But um, I, I agree with Joan's comments and, and we'll, we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. The, um, but yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Joan. Um, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm echoing what, what Joan said too. And uh, I, I'm in, enthusiastic about the potential of uh, heritage conservation districts in parts of the county. And, and looking at that chart, assessing the opportunities. And when you look at asset density, um, you know, downtown Paris is at the very top of the list and, in terms of asset density and, and, and potentially uh, one of the first that, that we may look at for this, but there'll be time to, to touch more on that later. I did have a couple of questions related to that. And that is, um, and, and forgive my ignorance on the topic of heritage conservation districts, but um, if if any of those areas uh, end up, we end up taking the steps to make it a heritage conservation district, does that mean that there are design standards? Um, you know, does it mean that, you know, and I, I made this, uh, facetious illustration four or five years ago, pro I think even before I was on council, but when I was a member of this committee, um, if it, if downtown's a heritage conservation district, does it make it harder for somebody to come in and buy John M. Halls and turn it into a Burger King or knock it down? Um, and just using that as an example, um, you know, one of our beloved heritage properties that I don't think is designated uh, that it's been there a long, long time and, and has so many wonderful heritage characteristics. Let's just use that as an example. If downtown Paris is a heritage conservation district, what exactly does that mean in, in simplified terms? Uh, I can jump in on this one and then Kayla, if you would like to add anything, by all means. Um, so the conservation district, it's similar to the designation individually, but you look at everything kind of from the whole, right? So uh, we look at the cultural value of this specific area. Um, and what we do is we create a conservation plan. So that plan applies uh, kind of blankly over all of those properties that are within the district. And then we outline in that plan uh, what type of alterations we would find appropriate, uh, what types of of changes or land uses we might we might uh, encourage or discourage um, and we can work together kind of with the official plan and, and zoning bylaw to put all of those things into place um, with respect to putting a I'd say a burger king downtown um, the demolition aspect of, of the development uh, would need an approval by the committee um, and i suspect that uh, depending on the age of the structure but this one is a great example um, that would be discouraged um, but uh, adaptive reuse is a very uh, interesting thing to undertake. So if the Burger King, for example, um, fit with the criteria of the, the conservation plan um, and they maintained kind of the facade and the appearance um, as was appropriate, uh, no demolition needed, um, then that type of business would have no issue locating itself in our downtown. Uh, it just sets a bit stricter of the parameters for, for uh, alterations uh, and demolitions, uh, sets some objectives and make sure that people are really in line, in line with those. Great. And I, I appreciate you continuing on my analogy. The, uh, um, it's so it, you know, John M. Halls could become a Burger King, but it would have to be a heritage Burger King, um, so to speak, uh, in, in simple terms. Um, and and j specific to that, too. If downtown Paris were a heritage conservation district or St. George or Burford or any, any of these other areas, it, it does not mean that each individual property 
has has shifted to being designated. It 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 means that some of the protections that go along with designation are applied to the entire area without designating the individual properties. Right? Am I understanding that more or less accurately? Okay, thank you. Uh, great. And and my last comment on this, you mentioned barns, uh, Brandon, and having having seen what happened to the one barn over this winter that did that disappeared. And, and I, I know you're you're uh, conscious of, of that. Um, the idea of us starting to take a look at at barns that that should be, uh, you know, even if they're not designated, should should be have have some kind of a, a couple of steps before they're plowed down. Uh, I'm, I'm all for that too. So, um, all right. Any other comments? We're going to circle back to the topic of, of heritage conservation districts in 9.2, but I will only talk about it a little briefly then, but, um, if there are no other comments, Nancy, do we need anything special to receive this information? Uh, no, we don't. we're good. We're all good. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you, Brandon and Kayla. Always good information. We we uh, we appreciate your your uh, expertise. Uh, moving on. Sorry, to... Chairhouse. Could I just make one one suggestion? I know um, the the committee was interested in some benchmarking, um, kind of a benchmarking exercise. If that is something, some information that they would like us to see, I may, maybe would suggest um, moving that as a recommendation, um, just to prepare that information. Um, and then council can approve that. We can get that done in a few cycles and bring that back to the committee. Great idea, good catch. Uh, Dan, can I say that that's, uh, you're making that motion with a seconder and Joan. Um, and thanks very much uh, as noted earlier. Uh, moving on to 7.3, the addition to our uh, agenda was the designation request coming from Paris Plains Church, and we all very much respect and appreciate the, the efforts of the folks who, who uh, manage uh, all of those Paris Plains, you know, the, uh, the community building, the church, the cemetery. Um, and we're gonna dive into this subject a little bit before we get staff to comment on this request. I have a very specific question. And that is the last sentence of the, the memo um, on this says, we ask that the heritage committee consider our request to be provincially designated. And uh, if nothing else, I would like us to clarify that it's not provincial designation that we would be looking at, it would be municipal designation, or or is it the same thing that it? But did we learn that last month? <laughs> that it's it's the same thing. So please include that in your in in your discussion with this, uh, Kayla. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I am going to present on this one. Um, we had asked someone from the group to come as a delegation, but it just didn't work out with switching virtually. So we thought we would keep it on here, keep it moving, have this discussion today. Um, so that is a good question. Um, so it would be a provincial delegation. So similar to those 30 that Brandon had mentioned that we have, this would be an addition to that. Um, so we do have the church already on there um, designated and the school as well. So it would be adding the cemetery as kind of part of that block and they are provincially designated. So that is a good question just to clarify that. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. But what I think I'll do is just kind of give a quick overview, um, just because um, it was sent out just today to everyone. So for those who may not have had a chance to read it, um, I'm just going to give a quick little brief overview of the request that was sent to us, um, just kind of in the place of a presentation. Um, so like I said, I had sent out kind of those standard questions for the address of property, the, the legal description, and the reason for designation. So that's typically what we would ask for um, if a group was requesting a designation such as this. Um, so I'll just give a little bit of an overview. So they're asking just because, like I had mentioned, the adjacent school, uh, Cobblestone Church, are both provincially designated now. Um, so they have stated that these three historical sites have been in the heart of the Paris Plains community since the early part of the 1800s when the community was established. Um, so they noted that the earliest burial was 1828 in um, this cemetery. 
and the Paris Plains community was heavily involved when Paris was being established. So they said providing labor, horses, wagons for building and transportation. So they were saying that Paris has a strong connection uh, with the Paris Plains and they wish to designate uh, to protect the heritage of the site as a whole, kind of bringing those together um, to have that additional provincial heritage designation. So there's a few things with this one. Um, it's a little bit different because it's not just say a residential home or think something like that, it is a cemetery. Um, so I do think that our next step would be going to um, the cemetery group. So our advisory committee. And if we do choose to say after today, after the information we have been provided that yes, this is something we're looking for. So please let me know if I'm kind of at all. Uh, um, provided if we do as a group see this would be a good. And we took a look to see because um, there has been a designation given to the Mount Pleasant Cemetery. So this process has been followed through in the past. Um, we may want to be provided the reasons for designation. Oh, I'm going to turn my camera off just in case I'm getting a note saying I'm cutting out. Um, so hopefully you can still hear me. Um, so for the Mount Pleasant Village, they provided us the historical information, um, some historical significant grave sites, interesting monuments, and then the importance of the village of Mount Pleasant in general. Um, and that was kind of connected in with their reasons for designation. And then there was a bylaw passed, um, a designation bylaw passed once all that had gone through. So I just thought I, what I'll do now is maybe open it up to the floor um, if anyone has any questions about the cemetery and whether or not they think it, this is a good one to go forward with and then maybe we can decide um, if we'll take this to the cemetery advisory committee as kind of that next step. Uh, sure, uh, thank you. You did cut in and out a little bit. I, I, I think we got the gist of it. Okay. Uh, and I know that uh, Councillor McAlpine has some uh, uh, comments and input on this yes. subject. So, um, just sort of in addition to what you've brought forward, which I appreciate, um, the cemetery itself dates back to the first uh, 1828, I guess, the first burial there. And it has burials from um, survivors from the War of 1812 is also linked to some um, 1837 rebellion. I think there's some connections there as well. So it's almost a 200 year history. So it's something I think that would be well worth uh, looking into. It also was the home of one of the first log schoolhouses in that area built in 1829. So there's a little bit more history there too that um, adds a little bit of extra context to it. So I would, uh, be willing to move it uh, to take it to the cemetery committee, I guess, for further investigation if the committee desires that. Sure. Thank you, John. Let's have a little bit more discussion and then we'll figure out the right, the best, yeah. most impactful way to, to move this ahead. Go ahead, Joan. I just want to say that there's probably no time like the present to do this designation because I'm more than well aware that the gravel pit operations are adjacent and nearby and we don't want to end up with a situation where they can do damage to it basically. Okay, yeah, thanks Joan. And and I, I can say that I spoke to, uh, on that subject, uh, the, the new gravel pit owner uh, that's to the north of the the grout the the Paris Plains properties uh, reached out to to me and I think he probably talked to John too maybe but anyway he he uh, he seemed um, very respectful of that property even so much as as interested in helping to protect it um, but I, I agree that there's a timeliness to this uh, even even just for the peace of mind. Of the the folks who who uh, put their efforts into these properties, um, yeah. So we, we we're gonna 
circle back around to a timeliness element here. Uh, Dan, go ahead. I also noticed that there was a recent survey done on the property. Is that was that for a reason? Was there issues with that? I don't have an answer. To that it was question. recently sold. Oh. Oh, okay. No, I was just going to say it was recently sold to the Miller Paving Company, but they were also looking to possibly expand the cemetery um, and square it off. The previous owners had offered to uh, donate some land, but it sounds like that may have fallen through the cracks, I guess. So, so there's a couple of reasons for that. But it's also an active cemetery at present as well. So they're looking at where the older graves are and where newer ones could be placed. So there's a combination of things there. So they've been doing a lot of work over the last 10 years, sort of crossing their T's and dotting their I's to just make sure everything's in proper alignment. So. Yeah, and, and just to, thanks John. And just to clarify the John's comments there about it recently changing ownership and possibility about donating land, that all relates to the farmland uh, that is is now owned by another company, not to the cemetery itself. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and and so we, I can say this, I've spoken a little bit to the, the some of the folks out in, in uh, that are involved in the Paris Plains Church properties uh, on a couple different contexts. And 27 years ago, I was married in that church and, and uh, we want to do, I believe we want to do whatever we can to to support and foster this this group in their per, pursuit of of continuing with these properties and and there's you know wh whatever we can do to help support them and and to build um strength and enthusiasm related to those properties uh um i'm all for it i i you know john mentioned making a motion uh, and oh before we even get to that i wanted to touch on one other thing so when the last Heritage Advisory Committee minutes went to council, uh, Councillor Gatward um, brought up a point about uh, shouldn't we, uh, you know, shouldn't we look at designating all of the cemeteries in the county? And uh, and while while that's uh, uh, an interesting subject worth pursuing. Um, at an appropriate time, I didn't want this request to get bogged down into a bigger request that might take a lot longer. Um, so, uh, and, and I respect Councillor Gatward's suggestion and it's definitely worth um, further discussion and, and kind of being on our, our, our radar. Um, however, uh, some cemeteries, my understanding is, some cemeteries in the in the county are owned by the county, and some cemeteries are not. And in this one is not owned by the county of Brant, and and the people who are responsible for it uh, have come in with a specific request. And I I like the idea of us um, marshalling on with that request. And so John McAlpine was initiating a motion. John, if you don't mind the suggestion of a friendly amendment mm -hmm. before yeah. we send it to this the the cemetery advisory committee which meets later in may um i'm wondering if we could strengthen the motion a little bit to say that the heritage advisory committee supports uh the the group's request for designation and 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 then pass it on to uh, the Cemetery Advisory Committee for their comments. But I, I just wanted to kind of underline the fact that this group supports it if, if the votes go that way. Yeah, and I'm just wondering if Brandon and Kayla would like to add anything into that motion that uh, would help in the bringing this forward, I guess, at this stage. If I could. Uh, Councillor House, or yes, absolutely. House. Um, I would just say or suggest maybe the wording to be in principle for now, um, while we're still early in the um, supporting it in principle, uh, so to speak, while we're early in the stages. And then that way, as we get more information, we can still provide the report and do our assessment um, and then provide that actual recommendation to Council. Just keeping Great. it very high level. Okay. Great. Yeah, but, but that's still showing our support yeah. in principle. 
Um, Nancy, you've got the just the bones of that motion. Will that was motion made by Councillor McAlpine? Nancy's okay. Do we have a seconder? Uh, Dan Brown is seconding that motion. Uh, any questions before we vote on it? Okay, all in favor? Okay, that's passed and I'm happy to see us uh, supporting that initiative uh, from the Paris Plains Church folks in principle. Um, next, we're gonna move on to communications. I don't think we have any. Um, I, I forgot to mention earlier, I'm gonna have a couple, two or three little quick points to add into uh, um, that will be in other business right at the tail end. Uh, next, we will move into other business and I wanna welcome the folks from Adelaide Hunter Hoodless Homestead. We appreciate your patience sitting through all of this uh, heritage discussion and uh, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair House and committee members. Uh, I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to present our request um, to replace the type of materials being put on the homestead. Uh, just to give you an update on what the homestead really is, it was built in 1850. It's the Adelaide Hunter Hoodless Homestead. It's an early 19th century, one and a half story wood frame farmhouse. It's located in St. George. It's the birthplace and childhood home of Adelaide Hunter. It's a national historic site. So we're here to ask for your consideration for an alteration request to change the type of shingles used on the homestead. And there's a couple of issues. Right now it has cedar shingles. So the two issues are one is availability and the other is the cost. We did get quotes last year for, the, uh, for cedar shingles. And, uh, and some for the um, asphalt singles, but everything's gone up about 15%. So if we were looking at cedar, we're looking at over $60,000 to replace the, the roof. If we're looking at asphalt, we're looking at approximately $20,000. And if we're looking at a metal roof, we're looking at about $40,000. Um, the metal roof will give us a 50 year uh, lifespan. Um, and I'm not sure, I think the 25 to 30 years is on the asphalt. We do have a patron who is willing to help us replace and upgrade the roof. And we do have a, a small amount from the County of Grant that will help us with that. Um, but the roof is in dire shape. It really needs to be replaced and as soon as possible. So we'd like your consideration to um, try and use some other um, materials because cedar is in, is in um, uh, hard, it's very hard to get. So if you have any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have some questions. I've got a couple, um, but, uh, John, you go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, uh, Margaret, you were saying to me before that you were planning, if you did go with steel, to be in a form that look, would look like uh, the cedar shingles kind of idea. Yes. To keep yes. with the historical, yeah. So yeah, that's cool. just so the board knows that. Sure. Thank you, John. Um, I think, uh, go ahead, Dan. So just to uh, confirm, isn't it a designated structure? It is. And what money is available through the county for improvements like that? We had uh, a, a grant, and I believe we have about 3000 a part of that grant coming towards the roof. And the rest of it would come from a patron that we have. Okay. I, I think, Dan, generally speaking, and Brandon can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there is not a heritage grant piggy bank, uh, generally speaking, for for these purposes. Uh, is that correct, Brandon? That is correct. It's my understanding, and maybe Margaret or, or Lynn can correct me, but the granting is through kind of the general granting process with the County of Grant, um, and we don't have anything specific to heritage heritage grants at this time. Right. So, and my apologies, I, I, for, for, I want to introduce Lynn, he, who is our president-elect, and she's joining us from Nova Scotia. 
Oh, thanks, Lynn, for joining us. And uh, you're learning a lot more about the County of Brant than you probably ever thought you would need to know. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, Dan, go ahead. All right, one more thing. Um, mm -hmm. So recently I heard in the county, uh, somebody on a house had curved arch top windows. And instead of putting in square top windows and filling that in, the the county put in to have to pay the extra to have it look look like it was it fit in properly like it was original i is I, that am, am i not miss, am i missing something about where I, that extra money is for these types of things i think dan that you're misinformed okay okay uh, i've been on this well, heritage i've been on this heritage committee since before i was on council I, I don't remember any heritage specific grants. Um, there are community grants. We give away $300,000 yeah. a year in, in community grants, okay. but, but those are not given to individuals who are renovating private residences. Uh, go ahead, John. So I was gonna say the other, there is some money available to those specific districts for some of this that goes above and beyond the normal renovations that a person would uh, go for. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't apply in this case, but uh, they have uh, had grants for other things out there at the uh, museum. The, uh, the other thing to keep in mind when we're looking at a project like this is it's supposed to be, um, uh, one thing is looking at, is it reversible? So if down the line they wanted to say, put cedar shingles back in place, then they would be able to do that. And is it sympathetic, okay, to the look of what was there and what was intended? So in this case, I think we could look at the steel shingles look being sympathetic to what was there originally. And it's sort of an upgrade to something that will last a lot longer and be a lot more sympathetic than say, if they did just simple asphalt shingles, for instance. So it's um, trying to find that happy medium between doing the cedar shingles and the spending an extra twenty or thirty thousand dollars to do that. So, sure, okay, uh, uh, thank you, John, and and yeah, and that that's a it's a good point. And at, at the end, I'll, I'll come to you in a sec, Joan. The it, at at the end of the day, I know if the mayor was here, he would be probably voicing that. Uh, um, it, it, it would certainly be preferred if the, the cedar shakes were possible, but we are in a, an unusual time and we're, we're in a time where, where supply chain issues have increased costs on things, especially things made out of wood. And, and uh, um, it, you know, at the end of the day, the owners of this property want to protect the property itself from, from weather damage. And, and a $40,000 steel roof uh, investment is still a significant investment. So mm -hmm. um, I, I think that hopefully we will come to the a discussion in a few minutes about that indeed being sympathetic. Um, Joan, go ahead. Um, this may be a misconception on my part, but I'm aware of a building um, from not so distant past that had a metal roof and they had a fire and the firefighters had a very difficult time because the metal roof basically contained the fire. And so access became a, a problem and, and the building was basically a total write-off as a result. So I guess what I, can, my, what I just wanted to raise is if to investigate whether extra fire mitigation might be needed um, with that in mind. Sure, uh, thanks Joan, that's good feedback and also, you know, that, that may be something for the uh, Women's Institute to discuss with their insurance company, but that, that's good, uh, good information. Uh, thank you. Marianne? Um, just a suggestion. There is um, a structure, which is a 1785 uh, Mohawk Chapel, just on the outskirts of uh, uh, Brantford at the end of Erie Ave. And... Um, Oh, I'm trying to think the, the little street that's along there. Uh, I'm sorry, not Erie Ave, but um, Mohawk Road. 
on the curve there. So they um, renovated years ago and um, did a similar upgrade, uh, Margaret, that I'm uh, sharing with you. Um, there's pictures available online and you might like to have a look at those, but um, a metal roof was put on with sympathetic um, appearance of cedar shakes that were the original uh, structure on the tower, on the, um, the roof itself, and uh, it looks phenomenal and uh, is, has longevity. Excellent. That, that's very, that's, I mean, these, these comments are all exactly the, the kind of input you want from a heritage advisory committee. I think, um, and so I, I'm I'm grateful for the participation of everyone in this conversation, and and I, I'm sure our guests are, are appreciating it too. Um, so, with all of that said, uh, I think what what these folks need is something to move move this uh, game piece down the board a little bit further. So, if if we have someone who could initiate a motion to uh, to show the Heritage Advisory Committee's support of approval of this request. Uh, well, if that's so, he makes that motion, and then we'll we'll look for a seconder and have some final discussion, and we'll see how the votes go. Um, and I think John, I think I was just going to say John McAlpine. I think you're going to make the motion. Yeah. <laughs> so, sure. and, and that's yeah. and, and, uh, Dan. You're comfortable being the seconder. Any last discussion on this before we call the vote? Ah, Amanda has joined us. Hi, Amanda. Amanda looks like she's driving. This seems dangerous. Um, but thank you for joining us, Amanda. Uh, okay, okay, good, good, good. Um, and uh, just, yeah, go ahead, John. Just quickly before we vote, would Kayla or Brandon have any comments? I can provide, if I could, um, Chair House, maybe um, just again, maybe suggesting wording for um, kind of supporting it in principle. Um, and then that way staff can, and the committee um, can continue to work with, uh, with uh, our applicants here and, and uh, we can provide them some guidance to kind of ultimately get that council approval in the end. Excellent. I appreciate the wordsmithing, Brandon, always. And Amanda, just to catch you up, we are uh, about to vote on uh, demonstrating our support in principle for the Adelaide Hunter. I always say this wrong. It's, it's Adelaide Hunter Hoodless, uh, Hoodless Homestead um, to, uh, it's a heritage alteration request specific to their roof going to a metal roof instead of Jake's. We've been discussing it a little bit. And if there is no further discussion or questions, we will call the vote. All those in favor, that is unanimous. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and thank you, Margaret and Lynn. Uh, and we won't blame you if you bail out at this point. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for coming in to see us. Um, so we're winding this up pretty soon. Uh, I'm gonna have two or three other little last points after this one, but uh, section 9.2, I had asked for the subject of, of the uh, heritage conservation districts to be put on our agenda before knowing that uh, staff were going to be making it part of their their report. So we've already covered a bunch of information on that. However, I just wanted to um, and Brandon, if you can come back on the screen for a second, we are we're always kind of looking ahead to our work plans and our goals for the future, recognizing that that you know seven or eight months from now, there, there may be different people on the Heritage Advisory Committee. There may be different people on council. Um, but what, what can we do at this stage to informally, but still purposefully demonstrate our interest in, in looking into the subject further and having that on the record? Yeah, and Kayla, if you want to jump in as well about this, um, I know Kayla is looking into some more information about heritage conservation districts. Um, but just from my perspective, even having it on the agenda and having these discussions with the committee, it's definitely helpful for staff. 
Um, and with kind of the official plan project continuing, um, it's all stuff that we can consider kind of in this greater picture of, of land use planning as well. Um, but I think the step that we've, we've made today with the committee to benchmark um, and provide some more information, we can focus a bit on, on heritage conservation districts in that as well, um, as well as, as the, the particular designations, the individual ones, um, and just provide some, some comparisons to other, other municipalities. And then uh, hopefully we can provide a, some next steps that way, uh, maybe for, for the later part of the year to get started um, with some designations. And then if we want to do want to venture into a study area or, or a study, there is costs obviously in time associated with that. So the timing would probably line up um, with the election and with budget time and all that. So um, I think we're, we're in a good process here to, to get some, some kind of preliminary information forward to the committee. And of course, if there's questions or comments, uh, we're happy to, to help out with that. Um, but I'll let Kayla maybe add something because I know that she's she's following yeah. up on some further info. Yeah, so there's quite a bit going on behind the scenes. So beyond just Brandon and I um, speaking about this, maybe I'll turn off my camera so you can hear me hopefully. Um, there is the Ontario Heritage Conference coming up next month and I have specifically signed up for a workshop regarding um, heritage conservation districts. So I think that will be helpful too, to kind of see what's going on. I know there's some rural aspects to the heritage there with some groups as well, um, to kind of see how smaller communities are doing that as well. And the more rural side with heritage conservation districts as well. So definitely kind of gathering that information right now. And I think that will be really helpful. Um, one point that I was gonna add when we were speaking about heritage conservation districts earlier that I think is really nice to keep in mind. Um, and with past heritage, um, that I've worked with the fact that the heritage conservation districts provide that kind of consistency with the look of the buildings, three foot tall tower go in, say in a downtown St. George. Um, and this helps protect that as well. So there's a lot of aspects that hopefully you can hear me. I'm not sure if I'm breaking it up, but- You're good now. Um, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, okay. There's a lot of advantages to having them. And like I said, we'll continue to collect some information and bring that back to this group too. Okay, uh, thank you both. Um, just informally, and then, you know, this won't be a motion or a vote or anything, but informally, is there anyone present in, as a member of this Heritage Advisory Committee who's not interested in, in seeing further steps in this direction, a kind of a, I'd, I'd rather hear it now than hear it later. Um, I, I think you, so I'm then assuming unanimously our, our, our committee is, is uh, supportive and appreciative uh, to see some attention in this direction as, as we look towards the future. And we will look forward to hearing more from staff in future cycles on this subject. And, and Nancy, hopefully you can, uh, you can reflect that in the minutes that the, uh, this, this committee is, is, uh, is looking forward to more information on this topic down the road. Um, so uh, if there are any other questions about that, um, I got three quick last points to, to just mention to you. In previous uh, meeting, we, we did talked about getting a tour to see the, the Capron Homestead in Paris. Uh, we still wanna do that. I was hoping to tie it into uh, an upcoming in-person meeting. Hopefully in, it was aiming for June. I'm still not sure whether we will be in person by June. Um, we'll, we'll have to kind of assess that as we get closer. Um, certainly with some of the, the you know, technical glitches, which don't always happen, but, but um, uh, in person would be nice, but I also respect that, that there are some, some reservations about that. Um, so stay tuned on that one. Um, and the other thing I was going to mention is the, and this is a, a heritage topic, certainly on Monday, members of the uh, County of Brant Library Board and members of the Bucket Center Committee um, had the opportunity to walk through the old town hall, um, top to bottom, and it was absolutely fascinating. It, it was it was wonderful. Um, I took a bunch of pictures. I posted some of those pictures on my councillor Facebook page. You are welcome to check that out. It is one of the 
most popular posts that I have ever put on Facebook. It, it's been shared 20 times and seen by 2,500 people. There, there's so much enthusiasm for this project. Um, if anybody is not on Facebook and wants to see those pictures, uh, get in touch with Nancy or myself and we'll figure out a way that I can send some of those pictures uh, to Nancy and Nancy can blanket them out to everybody. But uh, if, if you are on Facebook and you want to look, they're, they're there. Um, it, we, you know, we saw the jail in the basement and we saw the, the um, bird poop and the rafters up top. And <laughs> we saw the, you know, we saw the great opera, the, the great opera house, which is, is uh, um, I'm told acoustically perfect. Uh, even after all these years. And this was in advance of on Saturday, there's going to be a Jane's walk around the upper town part of Paris. And there, there will be um, uh, heritage, you know, a heritage uh, informative uh, walk through the Jane's walk organization, which will include getting inside the old town hall on the main floor. They won't be able to take everybody through the whole thing just for probably insurance and liability reasons. But uh, anybody who's interested in that, uh, you can probably learn more from the County of Brant library website. Um, but it was, it, I just want to say it was, it was certainly worth, uh, worth doing um, and when worth seeing. And when we are, we are encouraged to hear that there's progress on that project. I think the selection of the architect for that project is being narrowed down very soon and for those of us who love heritage and we all do um it's going to be a great project to watch um so last but not least nancy i'm going to put you on the spot you could bring your camera up please um we were hoping to have this meeting in the new council chambers the newly redecorated council chambers, new high tech, you will see um, if you look across to that wall right there. So, so uh, the, the, the council chambers has been completely redone and we'll show you the rest in a minute, but that wall right back there is eight of the heritage posters produced by this committee over the years framed and on display for anyone who visits council chambers. I thought that was a very nice touch on the part of the mayor and staff who, who put all that together. And if you look around to, this is what it looks like now, great big stone wall symbolizing the, the kind of the rock foundation of the County of Brant. And if you look up in the ceiling, um, there's a couple great chandeliers, but those two pipes that for years were peeling paint and all that, we all remember that over our heads, they're now painted blue to symbolize the two rivers that go through Paris. And the light bulbs in the chandeliers are the Edison style bulbs to symbolize the fact that this was once the, the power uh, and electric building for, for the, the municipality. And so a lot, of, a lot of good thought went into it. And it's not just decorative, it's very functional. We have a lot of new high tech elements. So we, we had a committee meeting Tuesday night and, and it worked very well with some people participating by Zoom, some people participating in person. Uh, unfortunately, we can't extend that same ability to, to advisory committees just because we don't have the staff resources. It, it actually requires a guy to be in a DJ booth managing it all, but... Um, Anyway, it's, uh, it, it, it's a beautifully redone uh, council chambers, and I was very pleased to see the heritage posters uh, proudly displayed on the far wall. Thank you, Nancy. Um, any other last topics related to heritage before we sign off? Seeing none? Okay, thank you all for participating today, and, and hopefully we covered a lot of ground in a fairly expedient way. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you next month. We will let you know in advance whether it will be in person or whether it will be virtual like this. And uh, um, we will look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for your time today. See you all. Thanks.